is fondue? Well, let me explain it to you. Classically, there are four types of fondue. There is the cheese fondue, which we're about to do. There is the fondue bourguignon, which is hot oil, and you dip in little pieces of meat. And then there is the broth, which is traditionally done with seafood. And finally, you'll all know as the chocolate fondue, the big fountain, get your strawberries and pack them in. But I wanna show you the classic cheese fondue. The Swiss are maestros, and my father is Swiss, and that's why I wanna show you this one. So we've got Gruyere cheese. It's an Appellation Controle, which means that it has to come from Gruyere in order to have the name on it. It's like the Waterford Blah. Not anybody can call it Blah. It has to be from Waterford. And then we've got Emmental. And the last bit of cheese that the Swiss put in is called Appenzeller. Oh my God, I am in heaven, trust me. So we put two fifths, two fifths, and one fifth. Trevo, you're confusing me. No, I'm not. An entire bottle of wine, one full bottle of wine, and one and a half kilos of cheese. Can you feel it? But this is for about eight people. Now, the incredible thing about this is, go talk to your parents or your grandparents. Every single Irish family has a fondue pot somewhere in the cupboard because somebody brought it over here and called it fashionable. But it's a classic dish in Switzerland. So let's get it back out here. It's a brilliant dinner party, trust me. So I'm gonna show you what we do. We wanna take off the skin off the cheese, just cut it straight down. Oh God, you have no idea, no idea how much I love this. It's normally had during the winter time. But when I was working in the kitchens over in Switzerland, in the heat of the summer at 30 odd degrees, when everyone was having a barbecue, Trevo was there with the feet up, stirring the fondue pot. I love it so much. Trust me, you're gonna wanna try this. And then all we have to do is grate it. Now there's all kinds of games you play with your fondue. Trust me now, this is pretty much an adult's dish, okay? Because we're not gonna evaporate the alcohol from it. But what they normally do is that when you're rolling the bread around it, if it falls off your fork, you have to buy the next round. But I'm pretty sure we can come up with a couple of other ideas for that one. So get your grater and just grate all the cheese. This is so simple, trust me guys. Everyone's inside having a glass of wine. It's gonna take you 25 minutes max to prepare this. So let's go. Now you're saying, Trevo, we've got some great Irish cheeses. Of course we do, not a doubt in the world about that. But this is like going into a restaurant in Spain and finding Irish stew and they put goat instead of lamb in it. I'm showing you the classic, the perfect way, the way all the Swiss people eat it. This is how they do it. So we grate our cheese. Lovely. 1500 grams, one bottle of white wine. And what white wine do you use? Will I use a Sauvignon Blanc? No. The way the Swiss do it is normally they'd use the wine from whatever their region is. So where my father's from, it would be Vouy or it would be Coudrefin. But here in Ireland, get a nice, I love a white burgundy with it. Something like a Macon Looney or a Macon Village. Absolutely perfect. So that's what we're gonna put in. So we grate all our cheese. You get the idea. That's our Gruyere and it's all the hard cheeses, guys, so that they melt to perfection. And whatever's left, here's our Emmental. You all know Emmental, hopefully. It's, got, it's the one with the holes in it. So whatever's left, and trust me, there won't be much, but you scrape that out of the pot, put it on a slice of bread and a fried egg on top. Trust me, you've got the perfect breakfast. What a start to the day. So we grate our cheese and then our Appenzeller, and that just gives us a little bit of a kick and you can get this in any farmer's market throughout the country. They all stock these cheese, are good delicatessens. Get into your local deli, they serve, they have these cheese, and trust me, if they don't have it on the day, they can get it in for you, no problems. So now, here we go. That's pretty much our cheese grated. Looks like a hell of a lot, but guys, it's all gonna melt. So let's get our heat on the pot. Couldn't be easier. Nice and low to start off. I have cheese everywhere. <laughs> and you're just gonna use the back of your knife to crush the garlic. And this takes loads of garlic. You're talking five or six cloves of garlic. And crush it all up nice and fine. So, how do we start it off? A tiny little bit of oil. You're talking like literally a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half max. And we just put it in. 
plenty. And we don't want to brown off the garlic. We just want to get it in there straight away. And we just put it straight in. Look at all that garlic. Oh my God, that's the healthy part for you. Garlic's good for you. And now we're gonna throw in all this, oh my God, all this beautiful cheese. And I've done nothing difficult, guys. And you can get these ingredients everywhere. So I want you out there. I want you doing this one, lads. Trust me, if you love cheese, you will love this dish. Now, the bottle of wine. And the reason why I've done this measurement because it does for eight people and you can't forget. It's double the amount of milliliters in your bottle. 750, 1500 grams. It's simple. I love keeping it simple for you. So you put it in and you let time do the magic. Low heat, guys, don't get tempted to whack it up. Keep it low. And the smell that is gonna waft through this kitchen is just incredible. Keep your wooden spoon close, put it in there, and let the heat melt the cheese, and give it a minute, and let's see where we're at. Now guys, we're less than five minutes away. Just have a quick look in there, right? It's still quite separated, but the cheese has almost melted straight in. And we just need to thicken it up a little bit. And I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. But before we get that, we're gonna get ourselves ready, right? So here's how it works. We put a huge plate of bread into the middle of the table. So you just get a baguette or something like that. Now over in Switzerland or France, they might turn around and put like big slices of bread and you just pull it off. But we're gonna make it easy, right? So make your baguette, cut down like this, and then just cut it into bite-sized pieces. Fantastic. Now, I mentioned my father being Swiss, but not only that, he's the man who taught me everything in the kitchen. The first original master chef of Ireland, an absolute culinary genius, and I have him from my dad, and he showed me absolutely everything. So very proud of this dish, very proud of my culture, and that's why I wanna show you guys how to do it. Absolute cracking one. And when you can turn around and say, I've cooked for Muhammad Ali, I've cooked for Elvis, I've cooked for Princess Grace, that's a pretty impressive CV. Well, that's exactly the people that dad has cooked for. So I know he's gonna be sitting at home watching, enjoying this one. So you get the idea, guys. We've got the bread, and now you've got these little fondue forks where you're gonna dip the bread into that, and oh, it's gonna be fantastic. I am getting excited, and I wanna to talk to you about this. It's kirsch. It's a liqueur made from cherries. And how we thicken it up is we just get a little bowl and a little bit of corn flour. And this is a little bit of trial and error, okay? Because the cheese sometimes, you know, we wanna make sure that we've got the right amounts in. So we start off with maybe a teaspoon and a half or something like that. And this packs a serious punch, trust me. So with corn flour, it's very easily dissolved. So we're gonna put in maybe about a shot and a half. And the second you open that up, guys, the smell, you can get this anywhere. Any off license will sell Kirsch. So drop it in and we just, Watch this, this guys. Now you just stir it really, really slowly and the corn flour will dissolve. And you wanna wait, don't put the corn flour straight in because it won't mix. You need to dilute it like this, first of all. Ah, oh, yep, we're as good to go. Keep an eye on your pot now because it could be burning down below. Give it a good stir. And even at this stage, if you want, oh, look at that, just melting cheese. Trevo is close to heaven. Stick down, stick in an L whisk, and that brings it all together nice. The smell, guys, the wine, the garlic, the cheese. Oh my God, trust me, when you try this at home, you'll realize why I get so excited about this one. Now, we just want to put in a good few cracks of the black pepper as well. And what you do is you leave the bottle of Kirsch on the table, and I love this. Everybody gets a shot glass. So you pick up your bread, Dunk it into the, into the kirsch and then into your fondue. It's an absolute cracking dish, guys. So we're nearly there. I said we might need to put in another little bit, but I'll show you, you want to get nice, thick. Oh yeah, so just go in with the corn flour. Don't even think about tasting that like raw. It's not nice, so just pour that straight in and you'll see the difference straight away as we stir it up. It starts to thicken it immediately. Give that a minute to do its work. Beautiful. So now let's light our heater. Give the 
corn flour literally two minutes. That's just methylated spirits. You can get this stuff, guys, in any camping shop as well. So there's absolutely no excuses. So everybody, picture that now in the middle of the table. Everybody gets a dish like this. Fantastic. And you can see why now that this is such a brilliant dinner party dish. I'm gonna throw a bit more corn flour in there, guys, just to thicken it up nicely. You can see why this is a brilliant dinner party dish. It's a one pot wonder in the middle of the table for everybody to enjoy themselves. Put in more, Kirsch. Come on, come on, come on. What's not to like? Wine, cheese, and a little shot of Kirsch. Now, I said this show is all about classics, and I wanted to show you my most favorite dish in the world. I absolutely love it. And I, trust me, guys, I know you are gonna love this one too. So put in a bit more corn flour. Let's see how we look after that. There we go. There we go, Trevo, you've nailed it. Look at the way that's kind of thickening up perfectly now. <laughs> that's exactly what we're looking for. Oh, yes. And the only other thing they might put in is a little bit of nutmeg, but I don't think it needs it. And here's what we do. Trevo, you have done it again. I tell you what, guys, I hope you're gonna show and try all these. So you bring your pot right into the middle of the table, turn off the heat, everybody gets a fork, everybody gets a glass, everybody gets a load of wine, and Trevo gets to go first. Stick the fork into the bread, swirl it around. <laughs> and I tell you what, guys, this is red hot, but Trevo's going for it, because I tell you, this is my death row meal, and I love it a bit. This, an absolute classic. Swiss cheese fondue. Try it, trust me, I know you will love it. Because I do. <laughs>